Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model structural members in the new STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on modeling single members and nodes through the analytical modeling workflow. We are now ready to return our attention to the STAD Pro Connect Edition graphical user interface. In the ribbon toolbar at the top of the screen, you're going to notice that I have the Geometry tab already selected. Within this area, we're going to find several different tools within the beam tools in order to create model geometry. We're going to use several of these tools in the next series of exercises in order to model some additional geometry on top of our two portal frames that we already have created. We're going to start with the add beam tool. So up in the ribbon, we're going to select the add beam tool and we'll see that we have several different tools available within this one command. Your typical add beam command, which is on top, will be used to create beams between two nodes. The nodes may be existing or they can be dynamically generated at the time that you are creating the beam. You can also add beams between midpoints and perpendicular to an intersection. Let's go ahead and start with the add beam tool. I'm going to do a single click on this tool and we're going to notice that my cursor is going to change its graphic. This means I'm now in the add beam command. If I look down in the status bar, I'm also going to get a hint about what the program is expecting me to do next. Here I'm going to start by clicking on the node at the top left hand corner of the rear portal frame. And then I'm going to click down and create a diagonal X brace. I'm going to repeat this process between this node in this node. So each member would need two clicks to complete. In addition to modeling members between two existing nodes, I can also dynamically activate or create a new node. So say for example, I clicked along this member here. There's no existing node where I clicked, so the program is going to ask me if I want to add an additional node here. I'm going to respond by clicking yes, and then I can tell the program where that new node belongs along that member. I can enter a distance, or I can segment it into several different sections. Or for this exercise, let's go ahead and say add a midpoint. So I'm going to say add midpoint, and then we'll click OK. And then we just click to that new node that we just created. We'll repeat this process by clicking on the column adjacent to it. Again, we're going to click to add a node. And this time, let's do a proportion of 50%. So we'll enter 0 0.5, and we're going to say add new point. And here you can see I've created a member between two nodes that didn't previously exist. In addition to that, I can also use the add beam between midpoints command. So if I click on the add beam command, the down button, I can say add midpoint. And for this exercise, all I need to do is select along a member. It's going to automatically select its midpoint. And then I'll just select another member. And again, we'll click for the midpoint. Now that we know how to create a single member at a time, let's also investigate how to delete a member. I need to make sure that my beams cursor is active. So in the geometry tab in the ribbon toolbar, you're going to want to make sure you select your beams cursor. And then now you can click on any member on the screen. So say for example, this diagonal member is now going away. I'm going to highlight that member and I can just go up to my clipboard tools and press delete. And we're going to confirm that operation. This will also work by pushing the delete key on your keyboard if you prefer. The next command we're going to work on is the merge selected beams command. This will be used to join two collinear beams and replace them with a single member. If we take a look at this beam across here, we can see that it's still two different segments since we deleted that last member. If I hold down my control key and select both members, now what I want to do is join them into one and remove this node that divided them. If I go up into my beam tools, I'm going to find my merge selected beams option. Now this command does require you to make your selection first. We're going to go ahead and click that member. Now you can see that two different member numbers were used to define. I have a member number two and member number 12. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to use member number two. Now had section properties or beta angles or materials already been assigned, I'd also have the option 
option to assign that to override the member once it becomes one. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click Merge, and then we'll click Close, and now we can see that a single member is there. It's member number two, and the node has disappeared. And then we're going to finish off our first portal frame by using the Add Beam tool. And again, this can just be used to connect two existing nodes. The next command we're going to take a look at is the Segmenting Members command. This can be used to break a member into two or more members. So say, for example, I want to segment this member over here. I must first select it with the Beam's cursor. And then I'm going to select the insert node command. Here I can enter a distance just like I had done previously when I added a member along the length of a member. Or I can add so many different points along the member. So I'll say add three points. I'm going to say add n points. And you can see it's going to evenly divide it. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see that three new nodes have been created, and this member has now been split evenly. I can repeat this process by selecting more than one member at a time. So here I'll select this member and this member. And again, I'm going to say insert node. And this time I'm going to say add a midpoint for each of these. So each of those members were split into two. Again, each segment will be exactly equal. Then if I want to finish this off, let's go ahead and again activate our add beam command. And now I can just simply draw my beams connecting to the girders. Now again, we're in the analytical modeling workflow, so what's very important when you're working with analytical mo models is that every member is split where it intersects another member as long as they're sharing forces between them. So here you can see I have a girder that's basically being spanning from column to column, but since they're picking up load from these beams spanning from girder to girder, they have been segmented at the exact same locations. The last command that we're going to look at for this particular video is the intersect selected members command. Now in my model, you're going to notice that I have an X brace in this rear portal frame. You're going to notice that there is no node at this intersecting point. Now, if your intention is to have to detail a gusset plate at this intersection so that the brace members may share load at that point, you're going to want to make sure that they are officially intersected with a common node in the middle. Now, if you are not going to detail them that way, if you're going to detail them where the braces are going to be able to slide back and forth without connecting to each other, then you may want to leave it the way it is. Either way, it might be helpful be, to be able to identify intersecting members that are not currently segmented at their intersection point, which is what we'll show you how to do now. Now, without anything selected on my screen, I'm going to go back up to my beam tools, and I'm going to select this tool right here. This is my intersect selected members tool. And you're going to notice I have two different options. Let's select the first option, which will basically highlight intersecting members so that you can easily identify them. Now, in a simple model such as this one, it might be very easy to see where this is occurring, but on a much larger, more complex model, it might be more difficult to identify. So we'll go and say, head and say, highlight selected beams. We're going to set our tolerance equal to something very small. I'm going to set mine to zero inches, and we'll click OK. And you can see that STAD Pro has identified where I have intersecting members that are not currently sharing a common node. Now, if after identifying this, I would like to officially intersect these members, I'm going to go back up to the same tool, and I'm going to say intersect selected beams. Now, I could select them using the highlight command, or I could have just hold, held down my control key and used my beams cursor to make the selection. Either way, I can just say intersect selected members, and we'll click OK. And we'll click OK again to confirm. So now we can see that these braces have been segmented and there's a common node at the intersection point. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.